نحمده و نسلی علی رسوله الكریم اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم رب اشرح لی صدری و یسر لی امری و احل العقدتم من لسانی یفقہ قولی و جعل لی وزیر من احلی اللہم فکہنا پی الدین رب زدنی علما اللہم انی اسألکا علما نافیا رزقا طیبا و عملا متقبلا آمین سم آمین السلام علیکم و رحمت اللہ و برکاتہ سورة النساء ورس 138 بشر المنافقین بی ان لہم عذابا علیما گیو ٹائیڈنگز گیو ٹائیڈنگز تو دی ہپوکریٹس دیٹ دیر از فور دیم اے پین فل پنشمنٹ اللہ سبحانہ و تعالی از ان اے ویری سرکاسٹک مینر اڈریسنگ اینڈ گیونگ اے میسج ٹو آل دی ہپوکریٹس دیٹ فور دیم On the day of judgment, there will be a painful punishment. In today's lesson, we will be going through many verses in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be talking about the hypocrites. And not only this, but in Quran, in many chapters and in many verses, has Allah talked very frequently about the hypocrites. traits and about the manners and about the temperaments of the hypocrites it is it is an evil it is a sinful and a wicked state to be and it is a state which is which was very unliked by the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and allah dislikes this state for the believer also as in the second chapter of surah tun Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in detail talks about the hypocrites. Allah says, وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَقُولُ آمَنَّ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ وَمَا هُمْ بِمُؤْمِنِينَ That from among people are those who say, who claim that they believe in Allah and the day of judgment. But Allah says what? That they do not believe. So this is the comment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about the hypocrites that they are people who declare, who announce, who claim that they are among the believers but their behaviors and their characteristics and their manners are such that their belief and faith is not acceptable in the sight of Allah. What do they do? Allah says, يُحَدِعُونَ اللَّهَ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَمَا يَحْدَعُونَ إِلَّا أَنفُسَهُمْ وَمَا كَانُوا يَشْعُرُونَ They cheat, they deceive Allah and those who are the believers, but they cheat not or they deceive not themselves, but little do they know. فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ مَرَزًا فَزَادَهُمُ اللَّهُ مَرَزًا وَلَهُمْ عَزَابٌ أَلِيمٌ In their souls, in their hearts is what? Is an ailment. And Allah has progressed, Allah has increased upon it. And for them on the day of resurrection is what? Azabun Aleem. So there in Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning their punishment as Azabun Aleem. And here it has been again mentioned as a painful punishment, Azabun Aleemah. So this is... The punishment which Allah has advised and Allah has announced for all the hypocrites. Now what is this Azaban Alima has also been explained in Surah An-Nisa. So before I proceed with my discussion about hypocrisy, I would want all of us to understand what actually Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala means by Azaban Alima. As we will be going through the verse 140 of Surah An-Nisa today, Allah says, إِنَّ اللَّهَ جَامِعُ الْمُنَافِكِينَ وَالْكَافِرِينَ فِي جَهَنَّمَ جَمِيعًا There is no doubt. Indeed, Allah will gather all the hypocrites and all the disbelievers in the hell entirely. So, all the hypocrites 
have been with the disbelievers or the disobedience they Allah has mentioned for them the punishment of hell and here if you see in this verse Allah has mentioned the munafikeen or the hypocrites before the kafirin or the disbelievers and we know when something is thrown before the other thing it is at a lower level so in this verse indirectly this verse indirectly explains that the hypocrites will be at the lower level of hell as compared to the disbelievers but then in 145 verse 145 of uh, surah an-nisa which we will be uh, going through today allah says innal munafiqina fi darkil asfali min an-nar wa lan tajida lahum nasira indeed there is absolutely no doubt inna surely no doubt al munafiqina all the hypocrites all the hypocrites will be in the lowest depth of hell fire and never will you find for them a helper nobody will plead for them nobody will intercede for them wala tajida lahum nasira this is what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning as azabun alima the lowest the lowest level of the hell so we need to understand what hypocrisy is what are the traits and the manners of hypocrites so that we correct any if we find them in our personality as allah says in surah al-baqarah fi qulubihim marazan it starts from the heart a tiny seed of hypocrisy settles down in the heart and then it it gathers roots there and it it's it becomes stable and it becomes very strong and the heart of the person becomes the heart of a hypocrite and from here it then passes on to the rest of the body the eyes the hands the tongue the ear and finally the whole body of the person will become the body of a hypocrite he will be exhibiting the characters and the manners of hypocrisy so it is a disease which starts from the heart and then it spreads to the body like cancer spreads so it metastasizes to the whole of the body and here i would also want to highlight that hypocrisy is like contagious diseases it is an infectious disease and it passes from one to the other <coughs> that is exactly why that is exactly why allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in quran in various chapters of the surahs explains the character of all the hypocrites the purpose being that all those who go through quran they will be able to identify hypocrisy and the purpose is not to identify these these traits in other people and call them or label them as hypocrites no but the purpose is basically to identify the traits and to understand the traits of hypocrisy and to do a, a very strict self accountability and try to identify any and if if any of these traits are identified in our own personality we need to confess we need to regret we need to seek forgiveness and we try to improve ourselves as allah says qad aflaha man zakaha that self eradication and self correction to to eradicate all traits and temperaments of a of a hypocrite and secondly all these traits of hypocrites are also being mentioned in the quran so that we can identify around ourselves and save ourselves and our family and our children from any of such companions or the company of hypocrites or such gatherings of hypocrites so that we or our family might not be infected by these by this ailment <coughs> so now from here i will be obviously to we know and we realize that to save ourselves from a disease or to treat or prevent a disease what do we know what do we need we obviously need 
to know the signs and the symptoms for the diagnosis and then to treat it or to prevent it. So now what are the signs of hypocrisy or what are the traits of hypocrisy? As in the second chapter of Surah Tulbaqarah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the first trait of the hypocrite as Allah says, وَلَهُمْ أَزَابٌ أَلِيمٌ بِمَا قَانُوا يَقْزِبُونَ Because they refute the truth. They are not the truthful. They are not the honest. They are the liars. So telling lies is the first is the first characteristic of a hypocrite. And that is exactly what Prophet ﷺ has also told us in the words of a hadith which has been narrated in Bukhari and Muslim that the first characteristic of a hypocrite is, is a hadasa qazaba. When he talks, he tells lies. He is a liar. The second trait of a hypocrite as mentioned in the verses of uh, the second chapter of Surah Al-Baqarah is that he is what? They are temperamentally the naughty people. They create mischief. They are the mischievous and they create all forms of mischief around them at whatever level they can or whatever authority and whatever power they have they create mischief in their families in the society in the state whatever authority and power they have to whatever extent they can then in surah al-baqarah the next uh, temperament of the hypocrites which has been mentioned is that when they're asked to believe they said they say that should we also believe like foolish people believe so they consider as belief and they consider as having faith as something foolish as a silly act and they consider all the believers as foolish people as orthodox as fundamentalists and terrorists and whatnot and then in the end of all these verses of Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that they have a dual personality. They have a double personality. And then I would be uh, talking about a few words of hadith. I would be narrating a few hadith to elaborate on the traits of the hypocrite. Prophet Sallallahu has been reported to has been reported by Hazrat Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu in Bukhari and Muslim that Prophet sallallahu said that for a hypocrite no prayer is more tiresome than the salah of Fajr and the salah of Isha. So this is a trait and a behavior of a hypocrite that he finds it difficult. He finds it difficult to pray. Salah is tiresome for him. He finds it he finds it cumbersome to offer his salah. He doesn't like offering salah and he finds it difficult to offer salah as we will come across the verse today where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning the trait of the hypocrites of Medina. And we shall be talking about it. So the next trait which Prophet has highlighted in his words is that he says that a person, a person who neither did jihad that is, he did not struggle in the path of Allah. A person who neither did jihad or nor did he develop the desire to do jihad in his life. He, he, would, he died as a hypocrite. So this is failure to do jihad and the lack of desire to struggle in the path of Allah may be May it be with his word of mouth, by his pen, by his money, or actually, actually fighting in the battlefield, whatever form of jihad, neither he did it nor did he desire to do it, then he will be presented as a hypocrite in the court of Allah. And then in the end, I would repeat the very comprehensive traits as reported in Bukhari and Muslim that the Prophet Sallallahu said the traits of Munafik are four. Ayatul Munafiku Ruba is a Hadasa Qazaba, is a Ahada Wadara, or the or the hadith also says Ahlafa is a Tumana Hana is a Hosama Fajara. So the traits of a hypocrite are four. 
if he has all the four then he is a he is a full hypocrite and but if he leaves all of them then only with this hypocrisy the traits of hypocrisy will come out of him <coughs> so the four traits of hypocrite are what that whenever he talks he tells lies whenever he pledges or whenever he makes a promise he breaks it and he doesn't look after it and uh, for he doesn't fulfill it and whenever he is given a trust he is not honest and he is not trustworthy and whenever he fights then he just erupts he misbehaves and he he starts abusing and using foul language so this is these are the very comprehensively the four traits of a hypocrite now before we go on to the next verse as far as these four traits of a hypocrite are concerned um i have talked about the importance of honesty and the dislike of uh, being untruthful or being a liar and then we've also talked about the concept of trust in islam and how disliked it is in the sight of allah to be dishonest or to be uh, not to be trustworthy and here now i would want to elaborate a few things and a few word a few words of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the verses of quran regarding the importance of pledge or the regarding the importance of pacts and deals and promises we carry on and we make in our lives here we realized that a person who who breaks the pledge is not a believer is what he has the temperaments and the traits of a hypocrite Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala in the first verse of Surah Al-Maida says "Aufu bil uqud" right away at the start of such an important surah of the Quran Allah starts right away by ordering a very important commandment that to what fulfill your promises and fulfill or complete your pledges and in another place in another verse allah says allah warns innal ahdi kana maskula that what will happen on the day of judgment will be that on the day of the judgment there is absolutely no doubt that all the pledges and all the promises and all the business deals and the pacts they will be asked about there will be inquiry and there will be accountability regarding all the pledges and promises Oh Allah help us help us remember and realize the importance of this pledge and promise in our life and then in the ayat in the verse of which where Allah is explaining the concept of goodness and the good deeds and the concept of virtues in Islam Allah has said that virtues and pious are the people who do what they fulfill their pledges they fulfill their promises and in surah mu'minun allah explaining the traits of the believers allah says walazina li amanatihim wa wa ahdihim ra'un that believers are those who do what that they are caring and they are careful about their pledges and about their trust Remember Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has told all of us that one who does not care about his trust has no belief and one who does not care or is not careful about his pledge has no faith so being dishonest or not fulfilling one's promises or pledges will destroy the faith and will be destructive for the religion as well on the day of judgment prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has told all of us and has war, war, warned all of us that what dishonor will there be what what disgrace will will there be for those who used to who used to go about with the breach of a pact who did not care about their pledges or promises will be that flags will be put on the heads of those who would break promises or would do 
what they would have a breach of their pact allahumma la taj'alna minhum allahumma la taj'alna minhum allahumma la taj'alna minhum and in the end i would uh, mention about a supplication prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has taught all of us to save ourselves from hypocrisy allahumma tahhir qalbi min an-nifaq wa amali min ar-riya' wa lisani min al-qazab wa 'ayni min al-khayanah innaka ta'lamu man khayinat al-'ayni wa ma tuhfi as-sudur so here prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has Uh, taught us to seek the refuge of Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala regarding all the traits the evil traits and the sinful traits and the wicked traits of all forms of hypocrisy verse 139 الذين يتخذون الكافرين اولياء من دون المؤمنين those who take disbelievers as allies as wali instead of believers do they seek do they seek with them honor through power but indeed honor belongs to Allah entirely verse 140 and it has already come down to you in the book that when you hear the verses of allah they are denied by them and ridiculed so do not sit with them until they enter into another conversation indeed you would then be like them indeed allah will gather the hypocrites and the disbelievers in hell all together so in this verse a manner of a hypocrite is being mentioned that he tries to take friends and he take tries to take wala with those who are the disbelievers and he goes about with them and he enjoys and he participates in their conversations and in their gatherings and he stays with them to seek honor and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has strictly condemned this behavior and here in this verse allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ordering all of us <coughs> Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala is ordering all of us and all the believers not to stay or not to be present in certain types of gatherings. So a believer's presence in a specific type of gathering is being condemned and it is Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala says nazzala alaykum fil kitab so it is like obligatory for muslims not to stay in this type of a gathering what type of gatherings is allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying is as samaytum ayatillahi yukfaru biha wa yustahsa'u biha allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that the gathering is one in which what is happening is that people in the gathering are they are denying and they are ridiculing the verses of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that gatherings where the people deny and ridicule the verses and the commandments of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala believers are being stopped and they've been asked to refrain to be a part and party of these gatherings till they they get involved in another conversation so which are the gatherings or how is it that people will be denying and ridiculing the verses of quran this can be in two forms this can be verbally or by the word of mouth or secondly a person can deny reject or ridicule the verses of allah by his behavior by his activities now talking about the first form is by the word of mouth when people gather when people gather and they are openly refusing or rejecting the commandments of allah and they are criticizing the teachings of hadith and sunnah like for example you might have come across certain get togethers in when where people 
the so called intellectuals in their arrogance you might have heard people saying things like that nowhere nowhere is it written or mentioned in the quran that muslim women need to cover their heads nowhere does allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say that muslim woman is supposed to cover her face with a veil a veil is not obligatory for a muslim woman or criticizing things like saying that wine is not forbidden in islam and this banking system and the usury and riba it is not forbidden or people in the gathering they are making fun they are making fun of or they are mocking modest modest muslim women women with veil calling them with names like calling them like ninja turtles and ridiculing men with beard or men who are going to the mosque five times a day calling them fanatics calling them crazy calling things like they don't have anything better to do na'uzu billah summa na'uzu billah min zalik they don't have anything better to do so they just keep on going to the mosque they they have as if they've developed a mosque mania so such form of a conversation if we ever come across in a gathering <coughs> if we come across in a gathering we need to we need to avoid this gathering or we need to get up and leave this gathering why is it so because obviously obviously overhearing such form of conversation might influence a believer might influence the believer the state of mind of a believer might get affected and this would cause a weakening of the faith and this might cause the believer to stagger and that is why to avoid all this allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking us to refrain from being within these people and within this conversation and gathering now the second type of the gathering is in which the people are rejecting or making fun or refusing or ridiculing the verses and commandments of Allah by their behavior that is what that by their activities they show by their activities by their behavior they show as if they are just not bothered about what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's don'ts are what is forbidden in Quran and for, uh, forbidden in hadith like dancing in music and mixed gatherings and drinking and gambling and wasteful spending and showing off and exhibition and demonstration of wealth is going about may it be a marriage event may it be a concert and all such things are being carried out openly without any hesitation without any regret without any fear of allah without any fear of accountability of the day of resurrection all these things are being carried out openly arrogantly and they are proud of all that this actually implies what it actually implies that all those people who are involved or who are participating in such in such wicked and sinful activities forbidden activities are by their behavior or by their manner openly rejecting and making fun of the commandments of allah and of hadith so this is where we are all being stopped to be a part and parcel of now why are the believers being stopped to be present here there are many reasons like the first reason is the first reason is that obviously very obviously we cannot realize that such an environment and such a company or a party or a gathering may turn out to be very mysteriously attractive it may be very powerfully catchy all the activities may be tempting fascinating seductive alluring alluring to the extent that a person a believer 
in such a place might just happen to these activities might just happen to appeal him he might just happen to like or approve or enjoy in any degree or any form what is happening there and then his faith will be destroyed this will weaken his faith this will destroy his faith and belief and faith and belief there is absolutely no doubt is our most valuable treasure which we need to cherish and protect and save from destruction in any case and prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says one who copies any other nation he is one of them and that is what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying here also innakum idha misluhum that if you stay there and if you just be there and if you be a part and party to their activities then in the sight of allah you will be like them you will be like one of them and that is why allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that if you will be in the sight of allah like one of them then allah will gather all those hypocrites so here hypocrites are who 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 are staying on who are enjoying who are participating in all these activities of the gatherings that is why allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying allah will gather the hypocrites and the disbelievers in hell all together all of them together because they were all a party to all that so this will destroy the faith being there will weaken and destroy the faith that is the first reason why allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking us to refrain being there then they will influence all these activities might influence a believer his behavior his likes his dislikes his preferences his priorities may just alter under the temp- tempting influence then the third reason the presence of the believer in such an environment in such a place of all these activities the believer his or her staying in that environment will be a confirmation of the fact it will be a clear cut confirmation of the fact that if this god fearing person who who is who is either a scholar of quran or who is a student of quran who is connected with the teachings and with the sessions of Quran who knows and understands and practices the teaching of Quran if he is or she is present she is present this means he or she is okay with it she or he is fine with it then maybe maybe all these activities are permissible in Islam maybe they are all not forbidden in quran so the presence of the person presence of the person whom the society his family his relatives and his clan they all know that he reads quran he teaches quran he learns quran he's connected with the quran and he is practicing quran in his life his or her presence will put a seal or a stamp of the acceptability of all these things in islam and this is not desirable we by our presence should not put a seal or stamp of exhibit exhibit acceptability of all these things in islam and the fourth thing why we've been asked to do so is that the walking out the walking out or being absent of a person connected with quran would have another positive effect for example you know if there is a marriage event going on with all these activities proceeding but if a near relative like a sister sister is not present she has not she has not joined in the gathering and it is the wedding of her only brother then people and minds will be forced to think people will ask the reason of her absence and this in a way will be a silent message and it will be conveyed 
indirectly in a silent manner it will be conveyed that all these things are not permissible and they are forbidden in the in the teachings of quran and hadith and this is why it has been suggested <coughs> allah subhanahu wa ta'ala let us help all of us understand and comprehend and adopt the code of life in depth which has been taught by quran now before i proceed i would want to highlight the words of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam regarding music and regarding singing that what is the concept of music and singing and listening to songs or music what does quran say or what does the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the first chapter of surah al-luqman has condemned all these activities of singing of music of all forms of rubbish and non-productive activities like dramas and movies and all these activities Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has condemned Allah has called it as lah wal hadis and the person who is involved and who is attached or who is associated in any way with lah wal hadith has been announced to be deserving severe punishment on the day of judgment and when hazrat abdullah bin masud radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu and hazrat abdullah bin abbas radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu who was the scholar of the umma the hebrew umma when he was asked that what does what does lahwal hadith mean according to the words of surah luqman hazrat abdullah bin abbas he said by allah that he swore by the word name of allah he said by allah lahwal hadith means what it means singing and music wallahu wal ghina by allah lah wal hadith means what it means music and singing so it is strictly forbidden in islam hazrat abu amama bahli radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu reports in tirmizi that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that it is not lawful to buy sell or trade in singing girls no is it lawful to take their price so in those times when the words of the hadith were being narrated there were no means of music like recording in cassettes and tapes and cassette players and all forms of musical devices which we have today there were just the slave girls who were taught to sing and dance so prophet lesson has just talked about that but the words actually imply on what that all forms of trade or dealing of music or singing buying or selling or hearing or Uh, creating or arranging such concerts is all what it is unlawful and taking the price is also unlawful similarly hazrat abu mama bahli radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu also reports in other words in tirmizi the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said to teach music to the slave girls i repeat in the arabs period of uh, that those days the slave girls were taught to sing and to dance so to teach music to the slave girls and to trade in them is not lawful and the price is forbidden so you see just think teaching music to the slave girls has been forbidden in the words of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam little do we realize little does my society realize that children sons daughters of respectable honorable literate and sometimes sometimes even religious families are being taught are being trained to sing to dance and what not in their schools and their colleges and their universities and then parents are arranging paid tutors to teach to teach the sons and the daughters of the believers 
how to sing and how to dance. These were the behaviors of the idol worshippers. What are we doing? Where are we heading on to? Where is our society going and leading to? And then, in other words, I would clearly, I am with all the references I am quoting, Qazi Abu Bakr ibn al-Arabi has related in Ahkamul Quran, a hadith reported by Hazrat Abdullah bin Mubarak, Hazrat Abdullah bin Mubarak and Imam Malik on authority of Hazrat Anas radiallahu ta'ala anhu that Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said that he who hears the song of a singing girl he who hears the song of a singing girl in a musical concert will have molten lead poured in his ears in the day of judgment. Astaghfirullah Rabbi min kulli zambin wa atubu alayk Astaghfirullah Rabbi min kulli zambin wa atubu alayk Rabbi inni zalamtu nafsi faghfirli Rabbana ظلمنا أنفسنا وإلم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكوننا من الخاسرين الله سبحانه وتعالى forgive all of us for all the things we've wronged for all the sins we made for all what we heard and was forbidden for all what we saw and was forbidden الله سبحانه وتعالى help us understand comprehend and believe the teachings and the commandments of Quran and Hadith help us remember all the words, help us act according to the teachings, help us refrain from the don'ts, and help us adopt and opt the do's and commandments and orders of Allah Azza wa Jal. Verse 141 Those who wait and watch then if you gain a victory from Allah, they say, were we not with you? But if the disbelievers have a success, they say to them, did we not gain the advantage over you? But we protected you from the believers. Allah will judge between all of you on the day of resurrection and never will Allah give the disbelievers over the believers a way to overcome them. So now here, Again, a dual personality of the hypocrites in their relation with the Muslim society and in their relation with the disbelievers is being mentioned. Verse 142. Indeed, the hypocrites think to deceive Allah, but he is deceiving them. And when they stand for prayer, they stand lazily, showing themselves to the people and not remembering Allah except a little. Verse number 143 Wavering between them, belonging neither to the believers nor to the disbelievers, and whoever Allah leaves astray, never will you find for him a way. Both the verses are now again, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is again talking about the hypocrites. And especially the verse 142 is regarding a, a manner of hypocrisy of the hypocrites of Medina. Because you know, when Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came over to Medina and the Islamic Republic of Medina was established and Islam was made as the religion, the state religion, religion of Medina, then there were these hypocrites. These were the people who were just care, caring and they were just bothering about the world. So they realized, very soon did they realize that if they accept Islam and if they embrace Islam and they label themselves as Muslims and as believers, then they will be able to take all the advantages of being the first great citizens of Medina. Hence, they will, uh, they might enjoy some position or authority and be successful 
and known well and be honored in the state of Medina. So there they accepted Islam. But what actually was the state of affairs in Medina was that all the men folk to prove their religion of Islam and to prove that they were actual believers and people of faith, they had to do what? They had to offer the five times. They had to offer five times Salah in the congregation, in the mosque of Medina, in the mosque of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So this is how. They were not actual believers. They had just accepted or embraced Islam to gain the favors from the state. And they were the hypocrites. So because of this, since they were forced to offer the prayers in the mosque, they used to do this, that they used to come for offering the prayers lazily. وَإِذَا قَامُوا إِلَى السَّلَاةِ قَامُوا قُسَالًا يُرَاءُونَ النَّاسِ They just used to do, they just used to offer the congregational prayers to show that they were Muslims. And the stage of their prayers used to be وَلَا يَذْقُرُونَ اللَّهَ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا They in their prayers or in their salah, they did not remember Allah. So basically this verse is highlighting the hypocritical manner of the hypocrites of Medina but actually is also highlighting the traits of the hypocrites regarding Salah. So a person so a person who after enters Islam and declares and announces and claims to be a believer, but despite that, Salah is cumbersome and tiresome for him, or he is lazy regarding his Salah, he out of mere laziness postpones Salah and leaves and just... Uh, <coughs> and just leaves and avoids offering salah in the time of excellence and during his salah he is not basically remembering Allah he is just remembering all his worldly affairs like just he's trying to think about his accounts and about his bank balances and about the dress she is going to design so this is all the trait of a hypocrite and then they are what they are wavering they are not clear-headed about the teachings of Islam in their faith they are wavering off and they are staggering in their faith and in their deeds and in their righteous deeds sometimes they they go towards the deeds and the righteous deeds and sometimes they are reverting to the sinful deeds they are doubtful they are confused they are double-minded they are all wavering and staggering Allahumma tawahir qalbi min an nifaq verse 142 يا أيها الذين آمنوا لا تتخذوا لا تتخذوا الكافرين أولياء من دون المؤمنين. O you who have believed, do not take the disbelievers as what أولياء ولا ولي allies instead of believers. Do you wish to give Allah against yourself a clear case? Now, what against? A believer would be a clear case to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that when that person makes friends, makes wala, makes allies, makes a wali with the non-believers. Now here in this verse 144, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is teaching all of us about our social, human social dealings. That is with whom, how, what, where, can we or should we relate, behave and interact as. To comprehend all these human social dealings, we need to understand that basic human dealings are of four basic types. The first, I will be moving from the most, the dealing which is not intimate towards the dealing which is the most intimate. So the first dealing is, or the first type of human relationship or the first type of human social dealing is a simple interaction. The relationship or dealing of simple interactions like 
in our day-to-day -day lives, we come across so many people around us, you know, whom with we interact and we deal like we're going to the market. We are dealing with the green grocer, with the person who's selling fruit. We are going to pick our child from the school and we relate with the mother of another child. We have nothing in common with them, no sharing, no acquaintance. And we might not even come across the person again in our life. So this is the first form of relationship or dealing is this is simple and a light relationship. The second form of relationship or dealing is the dealing of hospitality. That is when a person comes to our place. We out of sheer politeness and courtesy, we extend our hospitality. So this is the second form of relationship, which is obviously more intimate as compared to the first form. The third form of dealing or relationship is a dealing of care, of help or support. For example, we find somebody needy in need of help and support and we extend our help and our support. We see a person who is crying and we wipe off the tears and we console and we comfort. We find out that a person is sick and we pay a visit. This is what? This is the third category of relationships or dealings in which we are caring and helping and supporting the next person. This is more intimate and more personalized as compared to the first two. Now, the fourth form of dealing. This is the most intimate relationship. This is the most loving of all the relationships. The dealing of love and the dealing of intimacy. The relationship of the relationship of being loved and the relationship of being intimate. This is what is called as wala. The concept of wala in Islam, the person is known as a wali. What is the relationship of wala and how do we relate with the wali is? Some characteristics of the relationship of wala. That is what you very clearly need to understand. Wala is a type of relationship and wali is the person which has the specifications that number one, there is sincere, sincere and deep heartfelt love and affection. Number one. Number two, there is a mutual relationship of copying, of idolizing and glamouring and copying each other. Then there is a mutual relationship of sharing matters and secrets and hence taking advice or counseling each other. And the fifth is sharing entertainment. When we are free in a pensive mood, we have a holiday, we have our free time, then we share our entertainments. So when two people relate with each other with this specific format, then that relationship will be a relationship which is most intimate. And this is the relationship of wala. And the person and the two people will be a wali for each other. Now, having understood all these four forms of human social relationships, next, I would want to explain and we would need to understand how are we as believers made support, uh, supposed to go about all these three forms of human relationships. Now, coming to the first three forms. The first three forms of human social relationships, that is simple interaction or interaction of hospitality or the dealings of care, help and support. It is not that a believer can. It is not a matter that a believer can, no, but a believer should. With all these three forms, relate in a good conduct, in a good manner, in a polite behavior, in a kind attitude and be merciful. 
these three forms of dealings all the believers should with a good manner and conduct and behavior and kindness and politeness relate with all religion sects nations whether believers non believers muslims non muslims obedience transgressors all will be the muslims relating these three forms of dealings in an excellent conduct and behavior why the first reason being that muslims obviously need to need to learn need to gain knowledge need to need to learn skills muslims and muslim states need to do business business transactions trade with all the people around the world may they be muslims may they be non muslims may they be believers may they be idol worshipers we have to go ahead with teaching learning skills education conducting business trade because if we don't do these things the muslim ummah or the muslim states or the muslim businessmen or the traders or the muslim individuals or the muslim students they do not do all this then obviously they will lag behind they will lag behind in the race of progress development and the muslim individuals and societies and communities and countries and ummah will all remain underdeveloped with lack of progress and advancement in various fields of life so to progress so to ad- have advancement we need to relate with all peoples with all people whatever color caste creed religion in a very good conduct and manner and behavior in our simple interactions be hospitable to them be caring and helping to them may they be jews may be the uh, may they be idol worshipers we have to be kind to them polite to them courteous to them and excellent in our manners because we have to do all this thing with them and the other reason is that it is going to be the conduct of the muslims and the believers will be which will be a source of a silent invitation to the non believers towards islam it will be it will be the non believers the the non muslims the people of the book the idol worshipers when they will see the polite the courteous the caring manners and the conduct of the muslims then they people of the other religions and other sects they will be attracted towards islam so that is why we are supposed to and it is mandatory to be in a excellent mannerism with all the people in these initial three forms of dealings and there are multiple events in the life of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam where he was seen behaving in these four dealings in this manner in his excellent manner but the last form of deal but the last form of human dealings or the last form of human relationship which i have talked about as wala taking wali the loving bond the intimate bond quran gives a very clear cut instruction to all believers regarding wala whom a muslim will be permitted and whom a muslim will be forbidden to have wala with in surah al imran allah subhanahu wa ta'ala clearly has highlighted and announced that muslims and believers will not be will not be allowed and they will not be permitted to have wala with the non muslims with the non believers so this is a don't of quran then here in this verse and even in other verses of quran allah subhanahu wa taala has done at the second level has prohibited and forbidden for all believers and muslims to stop having wala even with the people of the book that is with the jews and with the christians and this is at the individual level and at the state level then the third is that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in surah tawba has clear has very clearly in black and white asked all the muslims to avoid the relationship of wala 
of love and intimacy even with Muslims who are hypocrites, even with hypocrites or people, as Allah says, who prefer to be disobedient to Allah than to, than to be obedient to Allah who prefer the state of disobedience to the state of obedience, then a believer will not take him as a wali. That person will not be taken as a wali, even if he is his brother, his father, his mother or his sister. Why not? Why will a believer not have wala or will not take as wali a hypocrite or a disobedient or a transgressor? Because the loving bond, the intimate bond, the closeness, the copying, the sharing, the following, the counseling, the taking of advice and the sharing of entertainment with a hypocrite or with a disobedient or with a transgressor will do what? If a believer, I repeat again, if a believer and a person of faith starts following, starts idolizing or glamorizing, starts counseling or taking advice from or sharing entertainment with a hypocrite or with a disbeliever or with a transgressor, where will that person lead, lead the wali to? Obviously, this will, this will ruin the faith, this will weaken the belief, this will damage and destroy the religion. Their advices, their counseling will just destroy the religion of the believer. That is why in clear-cut orders, a believer is supposed to avail of wala or take as wali only, only and only those who are people of strong faith and belief. Wala is permitted. Wala is permitted for the Muslims and for the believers only, only regarding whom, the, who's those who are believers. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Maida, verse 55 and 56, إِنَّمَا وَلِيُّكُمُ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا Behold, only your wala or only your wali shall be whom shall be Allah, his messenger, and those who are, those who are the believers. And who are the believers? الَّذِينَ يُقِيمُونَ salata. Those who establish the salah. وَيُقْتُونَ zakata. And they and they pay the zakah wa humra ki un and they bow down before Allah. So these are the people a believer can take as wali, and these are the people whom we are permitted to do the relationship of wala with. Only the people who are establishing salah, who are paying the zakat, who are bow, bowing down. And who are offering the congregational salah and the believers of Allah and people of strong faith are we permitted according to the teachings of Quran and Sunnah to take as wali or to do wala with? Only them can we confide in, only them can we trust in, only them can we take advice or we can have counseling with them, we can share secrets with them. And we can copy them, we can idolize them, and then we can share our entertainments with them. So this is the importance of human relationships. Talking about human relationships, I would also want to talk about the friendships. How important these friendships and dealings are. Hazrat Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala and who reports in Tirmidhi that Prophet sallallahu alaihi said, "Al maru ala dini khalilihi," that a man is on the religion of his companions, of his friends. So everyone should think with whom he is forming friendship with, and this is an eye opener for all of us. Whom are we taking as friends? Whom are we taking as wali? And whom our children 
and our family members are taking as wali and friends prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said it is been narrated by hazrat anas radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu in muslim that you will be resurrected with the person you loved in this world so this is the importance of friendship of wala and prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has taught us a supplication to shelter against the bad company prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to say as reported by hazrat uqba bin amir radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu allahumma inni a'udhu bika allahumma inni a'udhu bika min yawmi as-su'i wa min laylati as-su'i wa min sa'ati as-su'i wa min suahib as-su'i wa min jar as-su'i wa fi dar al-muqama Oh Allah I seek your shelter against evil of the day evil of the night evil of the time evil of companionship and evil of the neighborhood It's a beautiful supplication we all need to remember and to recite it and how good or bad company is going to affect our ideas and our priorities and preferences and our likes and dislikes and acts hazrat abu musa ashri radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu reports in bukhari that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said the example of a good and a bad friend the example of a good and a bad friend is like that of a scent dealer and a blower of a furnace if you make friendship with a person who is dealing in perfumes or scents he may give you what al misk it is a sort one of the best forms of perfumes he may give you some misk or a scent or a perfume or at least you may buy it for him and if neither if neither gets you nor you buy it you will at least enjoy the fine fragrance while sitting with him that is in his company you will be definitely availing of the beautiful fragrance but if you sit with the blacksmith near his furnace he will scatter sparks of his fire which will burn your clothes or at least the smoke of the fire will suffocate you So this is why we need to be very very careful about taking and making friends for ourselves and for our children as well. And whom is a Muslim expected to love and how are we expected to love? What are the preferences of love for a believer? Remember the primary priority and the first order of love is for allah as allah says in surah al-baqarah verse 165 wal ladina amanu ashaddu hubba lillah those who believe the believers are those who do what they are intense they are severe that is the most beloved to the believers is whom is allah so that is the right of allah that he has to be the most beloved to the believers and the second preference of priority in the list of our beloved is whom the messenger of allah muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam our beloved prophet hazrat anas radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu reports in muslim that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said what qala rasulullah لا يؤمن عبد حتى اكون احب اليه من اهله وماله والناس اجمعين a bondsman will not be a believer until he loves me more than his family his wealth and the people around him so this is these are the two priorities of our love and as allah says of these preferences and priorities allah talks in surah tauba verse 24 kul in kana aba'ukum wa abna'ukum wa ikhwanukum wa azwajukum wa ashiratukum wa amwalun iqtaraftumuha wa tijaratun takhshawna kisadaha wa masakin tarzawnaha ahabba ilaykum min allah wa rasulihi wa jihadin fi sabilihi fatarabbasu hatta ya'ti allah بأمره والله لا يحدي القوم الفاسقين say announce tell 
that if your fathers and if your sons, your brothers, your spouses, your clan, your worldly goods which you have acquired and the commerce and the trade whereof you fear of decline and the dwellings which you take pleasure in, if all these things, these are the worldly attractive, Shahawat, Allah labels them in Quran, if all these things are dearer to you, then Allah and his Prophet وسلم, and the struggle in the cause of Allah, that is jihad, then wait, wait, your result is what? It is later on. Then wait until Allah makes manifest his will. And know that Allah does not guide. Allah does not guide people who are what? al fasikin who are the transgressors. So this is why the preferences and priorities of love, the first order of preference is Allah and then is the Prophet of Allah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam himself. And remember, all those who love Allah and his messenger the most, then Allah and his messenger, they love him. He becomes the beloved of Allah and his Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And what happens? When a believer becomes the beloved of Allah, beautiful are the words of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Hazrat Abu Huraira radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu narrates in Bukhari that Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that Allah said that Allah Almighty says that he who has enmity with my friends, I declare war against them, and of the worships to which. My slave wants to approach me. My favorite worships are those which are obligatory. By excessive, that is by the supererogatory prayers, my slave gets so close to me that I start loving him. So remember that when a person is performing obligatory worships, like the obligatory fasts and salah and zakat, then that person, because of these obligatory prayers, gains the love of Allah. His heart gets full with the love of Allah. But when the person or when the believer beyond the obligatory worships starts performing the supererogatory worships like the Salah, the Salatul Tahajju, the Salah Ishraq, any of these supererogatory salah or supererogatory fasts or charity in the path of Allah beyond zakat, then this person becomes a beloved of Allah. And when a person becomes the beloved of Allah, what happens? See what Allah Almighty says, once I start loving a slave, then I become his very ears with which he hears only those things which I have permitted to hear. And then I become his very ears with which he sees all those things which he is permitted to see. I become his very hands with which he gets hold of only those things which I have allowed him to hold. And then I become his very feet with which he walks to where I have allowed him to walk. And when he begs anything from me, that is when he supplicates or when he makes prayer, when he begs anything from me, I do grant it to him. And when he seeks shelter, I do give him my shelter. So this is the excellence of the person who is performing supererogatory worships and then becoming a beloved of Allah. Allahumma ja'alla minhum. Then Hazrat Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala and who reports in Muslim that Prophet sallallahu said that when Allah Almighty loves his slave, he calls Jibreel alayhi salam and tells him, I love such and such person, so you should love him also. So Jibreel also loves the person. And then he declares in the heaven, Allah loves such and such person, so all of you, whom the angels, all of you should love him. So all the angels of heaven start loving that person and then grant of his action is placed on the earth. 
سبحان الله سبحان الله سبحان الله اللهم اجعلنا منهم اللهم اني اسالك حبك وحب من يحبك وامل الذي يبلغني حبك and then the third in the level and the preference of priority of love for a believer and for muslim is the muslim brothers for the concept of muslim fraternity and muslim brotherhood the third in priority of love in priority of intimacy is whom the muslims the muslim fellow beings and this love for the muslim fellow beings need need with sincere intention to be for the love of allah the muslims should love each other the believers should love the believers purely with intention of love for the sake of allah and what the excellence of love for the sake of allah in believers is has at abu mama bahli radiyallahu ta'ala and who reports in abu daud that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said qala man ahabba lillah wa abghaza lillah wa ahta lillah wa mana'a lillah faqad istakmala al-iman he who loves just to please allah he who loves just for the love of allah and gets angry just to please allah he who gives gives what arms charity gift just to please allah and restrains to give just to please allah he accomplishes he perfects or completes his faith allahumma ja'alna minhum hazrat ibn abbas radiyallahu ta'ala anhu reports that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said the most firm hand hold of belief is The most firm hand hold of belief is friendship to please Allah, enmity to please Allah, love to please Allah, and anger to please Allah. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala bless us with all these frame of minds. How excellent! How excellent love for the believers and love for the sake of Allah is. has at abu huraira radiyallahu ta'ala and who reports in muslim that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said there is no doubt that allah almighty will say on the day of judgment where are those who loved one another for my obedience and for my grandeur i shall bless them with the shade of my throne today and there is no shade save that of my throne and the words which you've heard very frequently in the previous sessions of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in bukhari and muslim that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that seven lucky people who would be permitted to the shade of the throne of allah azza wa jal one of them would be two a pair who loves each other for the sake of allah meets for the sake of allah and separates for the sake of allah Hazrat Muaz bin Jabal radiyallahu ta'ala anhu reports in Tirmizi that Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said those who love another that Allah said that those who love another for my grandeur will be sitting where beautiful words the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that believers who love each other for the sake of Allah they will be they will be made to sit they will be destined for which place for raised platforms for high pillars for raised platforms which will be addition to on the right hand of the throne of Allah and on them will be seated people with bright with shining faces with glowing faces and envious of them will be whom the prophets the messengers the martyrs and the righteous people and it will be asked that who were they they will be the people who would who would love in this world for the sake of allah 
How beautiful is this love for the sake of Allah? Hazrat Mas bin Jabal radiallahu ta'ala who reports that Prophet said, Almighty Allah says, it is incumbent on me to love those who associate each other just for my sake, those who love each other for my sake, who visit each other for my sake, who spend on each other for my sake. Hazrat Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala who reports in Muslim an occasion that Prophet said, that a person was going to a village to visit his Muslim brother and Allah Almighty appointed an angel on his way and when the person reached the angel, the angel asked him where he was going and the visitor said that he was going to wait, uh, visit such or such village where his uh, Muslim brother was living and the angel asked him, does he owe something to you? That is, are you going to get something for him? The visitor said, no, I just love him for the sake of Allah. The angel said, I am an angel appointed by Allah to tell you that Allah loves you as you love your brother for the sake of Allah. And then Hazrat Abu Huraira who reports that Prophet said that in Jannah there will be balconies made of emerald. In Jannah there will be balconies made of emerald. They are resting on columns of rubies. Their doors will be open. The doors will be shining like bright stars. The companion said, O Prophet of Allah, who will dwell in them? And he said, those who associated, who are associated with others just for the sake of Allah and those who love each other for the sake of Allah and those who visited one another for the sake of Allah. Allahumma ja'alna minhum. O oh Allah, bless us with all these friendships and all these relationships and all these loves. Hazrat Abu Umama Bakhli radiallahu ta'ala who reports in Musnad Ahmad that Prophet sallallahu promised that when a slave of Allah loves another slave of Allah, he is blessed with the honor of Allah. Allahumma ja'alna minhum. Allahumma inni as'aluka hubbaka wa hubba man yuhibbuka wa amal allazi yuballighuni hubbaka. Rabbana la tuzay qulubana ba'da is khadaytana wa khablana millatun ka rahma inna ka antul wahab. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu alayk. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun. Wa salamun ala al-mursaleen. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Ameen summa ameen.